Hi everyone, welcome to Live Darts TV. We're here in Skegness for the MDA and Modus promotion. Unbelievable event and we're joined by Sky Sports Export Wayne Model. Wayne, thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure, thanks Phil. I say, great event, it's been down a lovely arena to play darts in. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it looks a million dollars. Yeah. Hopefully I'll play a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I say, we haven't spoken since the match play. Gary's joined a very, very unique club. Only Phil, Michael and himself to win the Triple Crown. Unbelievable achievement. And one of the modern greats of the game. Uh, very much so. I, I, I believe that in recent years, Gary's been, I'm not going to say forgotten, but you, you mentioned the three-time world champions, which people do. And I'm on about you, you John Parts, you, you John Lowe's, uh, obviously Brissy being five times and, and everything else, and uh, Barney. I don't think Gary gets the credit for what he's won. I think he's still underachieved because I think he's, he's got the ability that not many people have, have ever had in the game. And this is going to be contentious, but I couldn't care less because that's what I do. I think that apart from Michael Van Gerwen, apart from Phil Taylor, Gary Anderson is the best player that I've seen apart from those two. So I'm making the third best player that I've ever seen. Uh, that's including Eric, that's including Barney, John Lowe, that's including these people. Uh, the way that he won that final against Mentor Sulevich, digging deep. Do people think that Gary can grind it out before that? Maybe not. He ground that out. That was tough work. And I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm, a Gary, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Gary Anderson fan. I, I like the way he plays the game. Get on with it. Get on with it. Play quicker than me if you can, and then I'll be happy. Right now, is he the best player in the world? Forget the rankings. On current form, is he the best player in the world, in your opinion, right now? No. No, Michael Van Gogh is always the best player in the world until he packs up or until he goes right off the boil. He's not off the boil. I, I think that Gary's still second behind Michael, and that's how good Michael Van Gerwen is. Obviously, the match play, so many memories, but if you could pick one, your moment of the match play, what would it be? My moment of the match play is probably, and I, I don't want to well up here, by the way, uh, which I did at the time, was when Gary had won it, and he's on stage, he's having his photos. I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. And he, he, was, he was up on the stage with, with Ty and he's having his photos done. And that for me is, is what it's all about. It's not always about the, the performing and doing it when you've done it. And then you're celebrating with family. Um, watching, watching Rachel and... No, I just thought that that was magnificent. And at the time, I was in the studio and we had to cut to a VT because I, I was basically crying. I, I love things like that. Brilliant. And from there, they all went to the Oceanic region for the World Series. We've had six World Series events, six different winners. Down Under didn't disappoint either. I, I, I love the World Series. Uh, there's some of them that, for me, lack a bit of, uh, lacks a, a bit of atmosphere. But you're not going to get what you what I want. I want an atmosphere. That's the way I am. I, I'm I'm just made that way. I want to see everything to be as as good as it can be. Uh, the one thing I will say is it showed that on their day, they're all very very good, very very good. But but you do get that feeling that there's a top echelon appearing, and that is Rob Cross when he plays decent. When he plays well, he's hard to beat. Michael Van Gogh and Gary Anderson, that goes without saying. The others have got to catch up because I think Rob Cross proving the World Series, he lost in two finals and won one, I believe. Yeah. Uh, if that's wrong, then, then I apologise. Uh, he, he's, he's the world champ and he's starting to play like it and I'm pleased with that. A lot of talk on social media about Peter Wright's darts. I'm not, we're not going to touch on the chopping and changing because we just know he does it. There was some talk, like in Paul, you can have a break cue, a jump cue. Could we see Peter Wright scoring with the thin barrel darts and then going for doubles with the ones that he used in the match play that he was so good at? As an ex-player, could you see something like that happening? Well, I've, I've, been a, a, I've been an advocate of people not... and I'm, I'm, I've been one that's held myself back for years. I'm a believer in throwing certain for certain targets in different ways. I've never done it because I've never had the guts to do it. 
I think Peter Wright could have the guts to do just that. But I believe that if you throw at a double and it and it blocks it, throw it differently. Like Phil. Phil goes for double three. It it goes in like this. When I go for double three, it blocks it. In exhibitions, when I want double three, I lay it down like Phil Taylor. And I'm working off it and I get it. When I want double 16 sometimes, I, I throw the, the Phil Taylor understacker again. So it can't block it. I think we might see that. As for changing darts, I'm not too sure. As for Peter Wright doing it, it's quite possible because, Peter, you're a lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> Again, another topical one at the moment is the radical BDO statement that's just come out. They're lifting their restrictions on players. Good thing for the game. Obviously, we know it, it still doesn't really affect the, the tall carded lads because they still can't play anything that's not sanctioned. But it's just the first step of getting darts all back onto one page, do we think? It doesn't affect the PDC whatsoever. And it's quite ironic that now the PDC have restrictions and the BDO don't. It's just the way it goes. And, and I understand it. Completely understand it, and the world has changed, so that's the way it has to be. Uh, I want to see everyone in the BDO give it a go. But what people might not understand is, is that, yeah, you're going to lose some from the BDO, but now those that fail in the PDC can now give it a go in the BDO. Yeah. That's where the restrictions have changed. If you're not a tour card holder within the PDC, do what you like. Sorry, that was my phone. That was, uh, I'm playing Phil in a minute. You should be practicing, otherwise you're going to get beat 4-0. He's probably right, actually. Uh, I believe that the way the restrictions have been lifted makes the players feel free. Makes them think, do you know what? How good is that? How good is that? We all want to see people do their own thing, play where they want to play. Don't. Don't, restriction of trade and all this malarkey. I, I can't stand it. Let people do what they want to do. And those in the BDO are going to benefit because they've got freedom. If they fail to qualify, they go back. If those that fail, that were, were PDC anyway, fail to qualify and get a tour card, they can go BDO. The BDO will benefit through this. Mark my words, the BDO will benefit. The PDC... Maybe, but the BDO are the beneficiaries of this. And for Des Jacklin to, to do this, great call. Obviously as well, the calendar was released for 2019. I bet you're glad you're not a player anymore because there's some serious air miles for next year, isn't there? there there's, uh, there's a lot going on. There really is. There's, I, I think it's great, but I don't believe that the players should be kind of I've called it rankings blackmail for a long, long time. I'm on about since like the early 2000s. Uh, I, I believe that with all the money up for grabs now, if you start getting involved in that where you're ranked, you'll end up doing more than you poss possibly need or what you've actually achieved you're trying to, to win back so you don't drop down the rankings. I don't think that's the way forward either. I think you've just got to play darts. And whilst I think it's great for the world of darts, organise your calendar wisely. And the PDC have done a great job. They keep putting on events. They keep making the players more money. And that's the main thing. But don't get involved in rankings blackmail because otherwise you'll be playing every week and you'll get burnt out. And you'll see what burning out is because some of them can't hack it. And that's the ones in the Premier Leagues and World Series. They're jet lagged, there was no doubt about it. Come the, the, the world match play, some of them are jet lagged. And again, I know that's contentious, but it, it's fact. A couple from social media for you. You're captain of your Friday night team. What would your six man dream team be? Any era, your six man team, who'd you pick? Sheesh. Right, so the, the best six I can pick, or the most like. So. Is that six plus me or, or five plus me? You can me? include yourself in that. Of course six it's you me. <laughs> Come on now. Come on. A team without me. That's not a yeah. team. Right. I'll tell you what. I, I'd love my dad in there, by the way. Yeah. My dad was a great player. He had nine darts on. He was 70 years old and two weeks. Uh, so that's that's four to go. Yeah. Michael Van Gerwen, and Gary Anderson, Phil Taylor. Uh, because they're very, very good. I'm going to pick one for posterity here. And that is 
one of the best players I've, I've ever seen not make it because his action went. And uh, he played for England, played in the World Championships in 94, Ian Sarfas, who's one of my friends. And I would have a laugh with him. I'd expect the others to win loads of points. My dad would be telling me to, to not drink so many Guinnesses. And I think that would be one hell of a team that we'd have fun and we'd win the league, wouldn't we? Sure. I like that. Beginners taking up the game, obviously, we all know that the kids are playing. Three tips to any aspiring player, what would they be? Number one is enjoy it. Number two is if you are thinking of, of maybe going that little step further, get your, get your basics right. Don't, don't stand there and do that. You can hit 180s doing it. I've done it. I've hit 180s from a chair. I've hit 180s from 17 feet. I can't do it every time. You want to do something you can do every time. You make it as simple as you can. You stand as, as, as rigid as you can. And if you can, just move the arm. It's impossible. It's absolutely impossible. And I know this. Because even standing here with no dart doing that, my head is moving. So you have to move. Don't. When I say be rigid, I mean be rigid, but also have that element of natural ability about you. Uh, and after that, listen to those that have been there. Listen to those that are giving you advice, free advice, because some people will actually pay for it. And I, I believe that right now, we all think that we know everything. And the world's getting worse. We don't know everything. We know very, li very, very little, but... Just listen to people that have been there. Before you go, we can't um, not talk about this. The Ryder Cup, golf, one of your passions. Looking forward to it. And are Europe going to win? I'm looking forward to the Ryder Cup, yeah. I'm looking forward to it for a couple of reasons. I'm, I, I love golf, but also I love a punt on sport. And I, I, I love a punt on darts and golf primarily. I've won a lot of money recently on Bryson DeChambeau. I'm going to back him to be the top points uh, scorer for the, the US, Team USA, I think they win it. I think they're better than, than Europe. I, I just really do. I, 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 I've, oh, I had a chat with someone yesterday. That we'd done an exhibition in, uh, in uh, Nottingham. And the guy went, Mickelson, he's their weak link. I went, if that's the case, Europe are in trouble. Mickelson, a weak link, do me a favour. Come on now. I just think Team USA all the way, and I think Bryson DeChambeau absolutely rips into shreds. Wayne, absolute pleasure. We'll let you go and practice because Phil's giving you some gif as well. So have a great night, and thanks for joining us like always, mate. Phil said he beat me 4-0. He won. It'll be 4-1.